in the IBM Knowledge Center glossary. If you go to Fact Store, you will read that the Fact Store is the part of the Counter Fraud Database, or CFDB, that captures the core business data for the counter fraud solution. The Fact Store is a set of domain neutral tables that are designed to adequately capture the business data of any domain. Okay, so a couple things. First of all, it does say the database is CFDB, and it is. We're going to look at that in a second. The fact store is also the schema for the database. So let's look at both of these things. First, we're going to start with logging into our Red Hat Enterprise Linux server. And th to make this simple, I'm going to assume that you've got root access. And what we want to do is log in as db24 core. So what I'm doing is su, that's switch user. The dash is the same thing as a dash l. That flag tells you to log in as db24 core or the primary database um, administrator for ICFM. OK, from here, the first thing we need to do is connect to the database. So I'm, I'm pressing Control R to go back through my history of commands, and I'm going to type in connect. Because what we want to do here is type in db2 connect to cfdb. And that should look familiar. We just looked, we just saw it here, cfdb. Sure enough, there it is. And let's do that. You should see information like this telling you db2 is telling you I've just connected over to cfdb. The SQL authorization ID is db24 core. The database server, some information about it. And we are connected to, um, to the database. Now, what can we do here? Well, again, we, we saw that the fact store is a central part of the system. So why don't we look at the, at the fact store? This is actually called CF fact, as a matter of fact. So if you want to see in fact, let's type this in here. Um, if you type in db2 and then select tab, na tab name, table name, uh, comma card from syscat.tables where table schema like CF fact, you can, we're going to come back to this grepping thing in a second, but you can, if you hit enter, get a list of all of the tables that are listed in or contained in the CFDB database for that schema. And there are 164 records found. And there aren't quite as many records. It's not quite as daunting as it seems, because very often there are uh, these repetitions. So we have something called transaction. And then transaction has all of these additional pieces to it. And we're about to see uh, that those are actually called object types. But we'll get to that in a second. So if you wanted to sort of browse through that list, of course, you don't have to do this in the command prompt. You, you can, of course, go to your database administration data studio and see exactly the same information. Now, I'm doing this in the command prompt, though, because I wanted to do something you can't do in data studio, which is to grep or reduce the or filter the results so that we can see uh, something called object types, because this is a key concept. So if I do a grep for object, you can see, first of all, we have physical object, something we haven't talked about yet, and then we have object type. What we're going to do is start with object type, because this is really, really important. Now, if you go to the glossary and you try to type in object type, you won't see it. But if you go to object and you go down enough, <laughs> you will find in, indeed, we have party objects, we have event objects, physical objects, and so on. OK, now, the IBM Counter Fraud Management Fact Store contains a set of core object type tables, object type tables, for most of the data items. However, because the counter fraud system is what's called softly configurable, which means that you can adjust it without uh, making radical changes to the schema, uh, yourself in DB2, because the system is softly configurable, there are multiple ways to to interact with the data in the database. But in order to do that, you first have to know what on earth is an object type and, and what do they look like. So an easy way to do that is to type in DB2, and you can do a select star from 
object type and if you want to be specific, which is probably a really good idea, you can type in the schema first. So CFFACT, that's CF fact, the counter fraud fact schema, and you're looking for object uh, object type. And this will return the results. Of course, that's very difficult to read. And so in in this case, uh, and actually a lot of times, it's rather, rather than do select in the command prompt, it's easier to do that uh, directly through the data studio. So let's do that. Let's go down to our object types. Here they are, object type. And if you right click on this row and you go down to data and then browse data, you will see the primary object types, actually all of the object types that the system uses. These object types are sort of fundamental. They are core to the idea of counter fraud and your organization may not use a term like party or may not necessarily use an account or even a transaction but internally the system is going to consider these things um, wh what you may call uh, for example a credit card um, will be mapped somehow into the system and of course in that case it would probably be an, be an account so no matter what you configure the system to do, the actual types under the hood are these. And by far the most important uh, object types are, as you could probably imagine, account and transaction and physical object and event. Essentially the first ones listed here, parties, th these are people, for example. You have you know, accounts like credit cards, you have the transactions that could happen among accounts or among people, among physical objects. Uh, you have events, you have groups, transaction types, event types, account types, physical object type, products, and portfolios. Knowing that, you can do a lot of interesting things about understanding the database schema from looking at this list. Let's take an example with party. So I'm going to, back to our command prompt, I'm going to clean off the screen with the control L, and then we want to essentially run the same command, but this time rather than do a grep for object, let's do a grep for party. And again, grep is grep will take this long list and then just sort it or filter it. So we're only looking at a sub part of it where we want party. And take a look. So again, we had a, earlier seen 164 tables were listed in this schema, but look how many of those are in fact related to party. In fact, you can find out what that is by doing a WC, which is essentially a word count. It tells you how many entries you have. 16 tables are related to party. Now, if you kind of extend that back uh, again, or take another example, do a count. It's exactly the same thing. So now we want to know how many of these are account related. And you can see a pattern here. So Essentially, these primary objects, these object types, are represented in the database schema as multiple tables. And you see that over and over again if you, if, well, either through the command prompt or, if you like, through uh, the data studio. You can see these things repeating. Party repeats over and over again. It doesn't really repeat, of course. These are just tables that relate back to party, but if you like, there's a, the object types are just absolutely fundamental to the way the system works. Physical object and reference, uh, you know, these transaction uh, amount, the, the, these are just, I can't overstate how important they are to the way the ICFM system runs. And then also I should point out that where you see this column that says cardinality, this is essentially the number of rows in that table. So we have 11 rows here, three rows here. And when you looked at the command prompt here and we saw these numbers listed on the right, well, that's because our select statement asked for card, which stands for cardinality. So we have the name of the table and then we have the cardinality value here. And just to show you that, if you go to, say, this one here, transaction disposition type, and I right click and I go to data, browse data, we would expect three rows, and sure enough, one, two, and three.